Hey guys, Laura here, and today we're gonna to be doing a mat Pilates workout using the ball. So this mat Pilates workout is gonna be a full body workout. You're gonna get some extra heat just from using the ball and some of our traditional mat exercises. We'll only need the space of a mat, so make sure that you have your mat laid out. This is a routine where if you don't have a ball but you have a foam roller, you can use that as well. You can even use a yoga block for some of the exercises. So if you don't have a ball, don't fret. I'll let you know when you could use a foam roller or a yoga block instead. If you're new to my page, my name is Laura. I'm a certified Pilates instructor and personal trainer, and I like to bring you workouts that help you to feel strong, injury resilient, so that we can be living life to the fullest and being able to enjoy our active lifestyle, our active hobbies, without the fear of hurting ourselves as we get older. So if that sounds like it's your jam, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so that you can see when I post workouts. And we are gonna go ahead and get started in a seated position with this ball. So go ahead and meet me there. So as we come into this seated position, I want you to take the ball and it's gonna go about your mid back area. So from here, try to find the bottom of your shoulder blades. So it's not gonna be super high up. It's a little bit more of that middle back, lowest thoracic spine area. And then we're gonna go ahead and teeter ourselves downwards towards the earth. And once you've got that ball connected to the mat and to you, go ahead and creep those knees up just a little bit more towards your booty. They're gonna be about shoulder width apart here. And as you're here already, we don't wanna be resting on the ball. We wanna be kind of lifted up a little bit more towards our chest so that we already feel our abs engaged. Take the hands so that they come either by your temples or behind your head. And we're gonna take a C curl crunch with a thoracic extension. So you're gonna drop your head down and backwards towards the mat. And then exhale, tuck your chin to chest and look forward in between your knees. If you need to make any adjustments with your ball, go ahead and make it now. I do have to move mine up just a tiny, tiny bit more. And now from here, we go again. Inhale, take your head to the back side. Exhale, lift the head, neck and shoulders up and forward to your knees. As you go back, you think about trying to come into a back bending position without losing control of your stomach. So I always like to think of my abs working like a zipper. That zipper starts from my pelvis, from that front pelvic bone, and goes all the way up to my sternum, to my chest. And I think about that zipper trying to stay hugging in and towards that middle line so that even as I go backwards, my lower back is protected. In two more times, we're gonna stay lifted up, looking to our legs. And on our last time, go ahead and stay lifted, looking at your legs. Take your hands, reach them beside your kneecaps. And then from here, we're gonna reach forward a little inch and then reach backwards a little inch. Forward a little inch and backwards a little inch. Remember that we're not laying, laying down on our ball. That's called a rest. <laughs> and we wanna try to keep that front belly active. So we work a little bit extra as we come forward towards our shins. And when we come backwards, it's just enough so that we can get that forward range of motion again. Little inch back, exhale, little inch forward. Little inch back, little inch forward. We're gonna go for two more times. And then on that last time, we're gonna come back over the ball again, hands interlaced behind the head. Find that back bend extension. This is really great for working your postural muscles, stretching those postural muscles, and also stretching that front belly. And now as we come up, we're gonna cross over to the right side of the room. So we twist to the right side of the room, and then come back center. And then twist to the left side of the room, and come back center. And as we take this side to side twisting, we wanna to try to keep our legs relatively still. Those kneecaps stay facing towards the sky. So I feel like every time I come up to the corner, my pants don't move, it's just my shirt. I try to take the top of my shirt from side to side. As your upper back posture starts to get better, you might be able to get your head downwards towards the ground and touch the ground, but I wouldn't try to force it. Remember, we wanna to try to keep that front belly engaged. We're gonna go one more to the right side, one more to the left side. And then once you're finished, take a hold of your legs with your hands and then prop yourself up. We're gonna go ahead and grab this ball into our possession and place it between our inner thighs as we go to lay down all the way to the mat. Lay down all the way onto your back. 
Your hands are gonna come down by your side. And then as a present to you, we get to go into bridges to stretch out that belly. So I want you to try to creep your feet in so that we can really maximize that glute work. I almost try to think about trying to reach my hands to my heels and also my heels to my hands. And then once you're in this position, we just have a small hug on that ball, tuck the tailbone underneath you and start to lift your hips upwards towards the sky, find your bridge. When you're in that bridge, find your zipper again. So that zipper turns on, stretch the knees forward. And then once you have that high bridge position, we melt the upper shirt down, the middle shirt down, and then your hip bones down. And then we're gonna go again, tuck the tailbone underneath you, pull the stomach inwards towards your back, and start to cascade that spine back up north. Your stomach should still be holding like that zipper, even as we go downwards towards the ground. That's what we call that abdominal bracing. Take the breathing pattern that works best for you. So I like to exhale as I go down. That feels like a nice little spinal massage to me. And I like to inhale as I come up. For me, that inhale breath helps to keep me away from arching my lower back. Every time I come up into that bridge, I'm trying to press all four corners of my feet into the floor. But also as I press down, I'm also trying to almost pull my heels to my butt bones and my knees forward over my toes. And that helps me to get a little bit of a deeper hip stretch and also glute and hamstring engagement. In two more times, we're gonna hold our bridge position And then on the next one, we're gonna hold that bridge position. Once you're up in that bridge position, I want you to give me a slow squeeze on the ball and then a little release. Small squeeze on the ball and then a little release. So this is definitely something that you could use with a yoga block if you don't have access to a ball. And you just put pressure into that block and then a little out, just making sure that block doesn't slip. Same thing with that ball. When we release, we just make sure that ball doesn't release. We're here for three, last two. And then after one, we're gonna keep that hold, keep a big hold on that ball. See if you can reset your bridge. See if you can stretch your knees a little bit more forward. We hold five, four, three, two, one, and then start to roll yourself on down. Once you're down, go ahead and take that ball into your hands just to move it. And we're gonna move it underneath your right foot. Once it's underneath your right foot, it's kind of like we have this staggered single leg bridge situation that's gonna go on. We're pressing our palms into the ground and I want you to press into the ball to lift up into your bridge, try to keep that ball steady and then resist yourself on down. Here, we're gonna take a little bit more of a flat back situation so as I'm down, my hips are on the mat, but I have a little bit of that neutral spine in my lower back. I hinge from the hips to lift up, and then I keep my stomach in as I drop my hips back down to the ground. So no more melting. It really is thinking of your hips like a door hinge that lengthens and then closes. We lengthen and then close it. And then this is also where that stretching of your knee forward over your toe comes into play. I definitely need more of this exercise in my life. I can already feel the back of my legs screaming at me and I feel like we haven't even really done that many. <laughs> We're gonna go for three more times. Last two. And then on one, I want you to hold that lifted position. In that lifted position, I want you to push that right heel that has the ball into it a little bit more, feel that heat turn up. So now here, this is my prep for myself because eventually we're gonna wanna try to float this left leg up, which for me feels impossible. My right side has to get a little bit stronger before I do that, but that's okay. As I press down onto that ball, I still feel my right hamstring firing up and I use my imagination to feel like one day I'm gonna lift that left leg off the ground. We're gonna go holding here for five, four, three, two, and one. Lower yourself on down, bring that right ball but bring that ball into your right hand. And then I want you to take the ball in between your right hand and your right kneecap. Give it a press there. We're gonna to switch to a little bit of a core workout now. 
press into that ball, keep that right leg at 90 degrees, lift the head, neck and shoulders up, and then take the left hand behind your head. Once you're here, lift the left leg up to table and then tap it down. Lift the left leg up to table and then tap it down. Right side is staying still, head is staying still, as just the left side is what's moving. Use that exhale to help you curl up. And here we have a flat back. We have an imprinted spine. So you feel like that lower back is just lengthened along the floor. In two more times, we're gonna hold the left leg in table. Next one, hold it. And now from here, stretch that left leg out and away and then resist it back in and home. Stretch the left leg out and away and then bring it back in at home. Now, if you don't need that support with your left hand, you can also reach the left hand back as the left leg reaches and then bring it back in, tap. Reach like a dead bug and then bring it back in and home. It's almost like an upside down bird dog working the same side. Left is reaching as the right is stabilizing. We're gonna be here for two more times. On your last time, I want you to hold the reach with your left leg. Take the left hand behind your head if it's already, if not already there. And then from here, we're gonna twist to the ball and then come back center. Twist to the ball and then come back center. If you need to, you can bring that left leg to tabletop or you can even rest it down to do the twists. You do you. We twist and then bring it center. You can even work like your crisscross where your left leg extends and bends. We're gonna be here for three more times. Last two. And then on one, I want you to hold it. One, we hold. Find that twist. Try to curl your shoulder blade off the floor a little bit more. Put more pressure into that ball. Hold for five, four, three, two, and one. Bring it in, rest it down. That ball is now gonna go underneath your left foot. Take that ball underneath your left foot find that goldilocks spot i like to try to contour it into the arch of my foot and then once we're there hands long by your side chest open we come into that staggered bridge lift up and then resist down hinge up and then resist down we try to keep that ball still it's just a try we get a little bit better a little bit stronger each day so it's okay it was not perfect. I'm not asking for perfect, just for effort. We're gonna be here for four more times. In three, we're gonna hold the bridge position. Next one, we hold the bridge position, press into that ball a little bit sturdier, and then on here, you hold, maybe use that imagination, maybe the right leg actually lifts up. Here I can feel that my right leg is a little bit more wanting to lift up. Let's see if I got it. Press into those hands more. Hold for five, four, three, two, and one. Lower it right back down. And then we're gonna grab that ball into your hands. Let's go ahead, left hand to left thigh. And then your right leg is going to be hinging up and then coming down hinge up and then hinge down for those of you that are new to my page i did have hip surgery a little while back ago from a rugby injury it's a very intense sport if you're not familiar with it um, so i had to have hip surgery on it so i still have my own deficiencies that i'm working on trying to get a little bit stronger each day and definitely my regular pilates practice has since really helped me to be more injury resilient as I run, as I play adult co-ed sports. We're gonna go two more times. And on that last time, hold it and we're gonna stretch your right leg away from you and then bring it back in. Stretch the right leg away from you and bring it back in. Remember to add in that arm if that feels good to you. And Pilates is definitely something I wish I would have had and known about when I was playing college sports. But now I know about it, and now I do it. <laughs> and I just share what I've learned from my experiences with you so that we can keep being able to do what we love for longer. Two more times here. 
On that last time, I want you to hold the arm and the leg. We place that right hand behind your head. We're going to twist the ball and then open. Twist the ball and then open. We can add that single leg stretch variation when you're ready. Try to keep that left shin bone in tabletop. I feel like mine might be sagging down a little bit, so I want to throw that reminder out there for you. We're here for three. In two, we're going to hold. Next one, hold it. We twist a little bit deeper. Try to lift the shoulder blade up. Hold five, four, three, two, and one. Bring it in and take that ball into your hands. <laughs> we're coming up into a seated position. And then from here, we're going to go into all fours. Well, ran away from me. <laughs> Once we're coming into all fours, we're going to go ahead and place that ball in between our legs and then bring your hands underneath your shoulders. So we're in this all four position, but that ball is now in between our legs. Give it a gentle squeeze. And now we're going to come up into what's called a bear plank. So those knees are going to hover above the ground in line with your ankles and then lower it right back down. Lift up, hover, and then lower back down. We're gonna do three more like this. Lift up, hover, lower down, lift up, hover, lower down, lift up, hover, hold. Squeeze three, two, one, lower down. Lift up, hold, squeeze three, two, one, lower down. Three more, lift up, squeeze three, two, one, lower down. Try to keep your back flat like a table. Lift up, hold, squeeze, three, two, one. Final one, lift up, hold, squeeze, three, two, one, lower down. Let's take that ball out from between our legs and it's gonna go underneath our right hand. Underneath our right hand, we take a little bit more of a kneeling plank position and we're gonna go into a staggered push-up here. You're gonna hold that plank position. Imagination, you take a push-up. True <laughs> reality, we bend the elbows and then exhale, press up. Five, bend the elbows and exhale, press up. Try to keep that ball still. Your shoulders stay square to the floor. Last two, one more. Bring that ball in between your hands with both hands on top of it and just take a child's pose stretch for me. Once you finish that child's pose stretch and gathering your breath, we're gonna come down onto our belly button. Legs go long behind you. Ball is still underneath both hands and you're gonna stretch it forward to the edge of your mat. You're trying to bring your ears in between your arms and your hands are reaching long to the edge of the mat. We're gonna pull the ball with straight arms back towards us so we go into our swan extension. Roll the ball towards your fingertips and lift the upper back towards the ceiling. And then roll the ball towards your wrist, towards where your watch would be as you go to lay back downwards towards the ground. Elbows stay straight. Your shoulders pull down your rib cage, down the side of your shirt to help you lift up into your swan. And then inhale, take the ball away from you. Maybe you like the opposite breath. I like to exhale as I come up. And you should be feeling the undersides of your armpits as you find that tall lifted position. If the ball feels too much for you, you can also take your hands to the sides of your shoulders and prop yourself up with your hands into a modified swan. We're gonna go two more times here. And then after that last one, we're gonna come back into that kneeling push-up position. Your ball is in the left hand this time. Palm on top of the ball. Right hand is in line with that right shoulder. We're gonna slide the knee slightly backwards, find that plank position. Find that plank position, hold that plank position if that's just for you. Maybe you have, I'm gonna change my right hand a little bit. Maybe you have your imagination working to do your push-ups. maybe you do small range. If we're going big range, we're going for five. We bend the elbows and exhale, press. Ooh, that side felt different. Bend the elbows and exhale, press. Work your chest, your left side 
has a little bit more of that pressure. We're going to go two more times. Use that exhale to pull you up. Keep that butt engaged. After your five, take another child's pose stretch again. Hands go forward on top of the ball. Already feel like you're stretching your shoulders. Using the ball for your swan is definitely a little bit more of a shoulder stretch. And then once you're done, we're gonna come back onto our belly. We just come up into one swan here. Hands are gonna go on top of that ball. Settle at the bottom of your swan first. Shoulders pull down your back. And then we're gonna lift up into your swan. Upper chest is lifted, you're looking forward. Now your legs are going to swim here. So we're gonna to start to flutter those legs. Our swimming is just our legs today. Your hands, your arms are working by pushing into that ball and trying to keep that ball stable. Your pelvis is pushing into the ground and you wanna feel your upper back here and your booty. Upper back side of your shoulders and your booty. If you feel your lower back, come down a little bit lower, let go of that ball and you can go into your traditional swimming. So you've got options here, do what works for you. I like to have the ball because me personally, I need to work a little bit more upper back extension, combating that slouchy posture. I play a lot of video games and I'm not about to give them up. <laughs> so I have to combat that couch posture. We're here for four, three, two, and one. Take your hands to the mat. Sink back into a child's pose stretch if that feels good to you. I'm gonna to come to all fours because we're coming into our cat cow. Knees are gonna be underneath your hips. Round the back into an angry cat. Try to levitate that spine to the sky. And then look forward, open up the chest and sag that belly down a little bit. Push into the ground, round into that angry cat back. And then lengthen the spine. Look forward. Three more times. Try to keep those shoulders away from the ears. And then one more time. And then that's it, you guys, you're finished. I hope you guys had fun. That was really fun for me. The ball is definitely not a prop that I use all too often, but it is a really great prop to use to help you feel some of these traditional Pilates mat exercises a little bit more fiery. It works a little bit more of your stability, so that means it's gonna work a little bit more of your core. It's not just working deeper into the muscle, also working your shoulder and pelvic stability as you're reacting to the wobbliness, the circular size of the ball, which is what makes it really great for injury resilience teaching your body how to react to an unstable surface. Really great for athletes, even aside from athletes, really great for hikers, rollerblading, anything where you can you could accidentally run into an unstable surface. It helps to teach your body how to react to keep you away from twisting your ankle, tweaking your knee, things like that. I hope you guys had a great workout. If you wanna see more workouts like this, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Let's me know that you like the workout. And then if you wanna see more workouts from me, just be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you can see when I drop new videos. Have a good one. I hope you have a great day.